Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are going to start talking about double shear. But before we do that, let's quickly recap what we had in the last video. So in the last video, we had this rod passing through these two connections uh, that were, uh, we were applying an equal and opposite force to. And so when we do that, inside the rod here, we get some shear developing uh, at, the, at the plane of intersection or the plane of contact between these two members or these two connections. And when we calculated the average shear, we found that it was 63.7 megapascals. Now, this is what we call single shear. And uh, if we modify the problem slightly uh, to be like this, where instead of having just the two plates, uh, now we actually have three plates. So one, we have that same applied force going in this direction. Uh, and then we have the two other plates pulling in the opposite direction. And that actually reduces the, uh, the required force that is in those connections because we need to get the force balance here for static equilibrium. So it's just if we have P going this way and we have two going the other way, those each have to be uh, P over two for the forces that are being applied in those connections. All right, so if we want to go and solve for what the shear is now in, uh, in that plane, uh, in between the connection, in between this pin or this connection and this connection, sort of in that plane of contact, uh, this, we do exactly the same thing. We will draw the free body diagram uh, and let's again, let's do our top-down view here. So we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have A on this side, and we're gonna have B on that side. So when we look at this, we're going to have P over two pressing up, and then uh, or in in that direction, which is this direction, and then uh, we're gonna have P going down, and then we're gonna have again, we're gonna have P over two going like that. So if we go and draw, if we take our, our section here at the this uh, plane of intersection, we'll draw a new free body diagram with the virtual cut there. And uh, let's, uh, let's label these guys. So P over two, in this case, so P is 20 kilonewtons, so P over two is just going to be equal to 10 kilonewtons. And then we're also obviously gonna have to have that internal shear force resisting that, uh, which is going to be equal to 10 kilonewtons going in the opposite direction. Now for the average shearing stress, we basically, we just take this, this shear stress and distribute it across the entire cross-sectional area of the member. And in this case, the cross-sectional area of the member was 314.16 millimeters squared. So let's go and write that. Uh, let's write the expression. So we have T average, this is the average shearing stress. Uh, and in this case, when we're looking at this, it's actually P over two. So we have P over two over area. And this can be more cleanly written as uh, P over two A. So when we go and write this, we see that we have uh, P was, uh, well we have, we can write this, we have 20 kilonewtons over two times the area, which was 314.16 millimeters squared. Or we could have just jumped, if we had a P over two, I would have preferred to have just written it like this, where we just have 10 kilonewtons. This is just based on the free body diagram. And this 10 is that P over two, so over 314.16. Millimeters squared. So when we just calculate that, we get uh, 0 0.0318. 0 0.0318. 0 uh, that is kilonewtons per millimeter squared. And uh, the, the easiest way that I like to do this to get this into some form of Pascals is I'll just multiply this by 1,000 to get this in newtons. Um, so that's just going to give us uh, 31.8 newtons per millimeter squared and if you remember newtons per millimeter squared is the same units as megapascals so this is going to be equal to 31.8 megapascals and that is the the average shear in between these two members uh, obviously uh, in the rod and so if we uh, if we took the average shear at the point of contact between these two obviously it's going to be the same. And it's just important to notice, so in this situation of double shear, we're basically getting half the, the average shear at these points in the rod than we were when we had single shear. Uh, so uh, something just to consider, if you, uh, if you have a rod that can't support a certain amount of shear, 
maybe it's a it's a good idea to try and set up a situation like this where we're in double share and it'll reduce the the average shares on on the rod